A star's mass determines its life cycle and ultimate fate. For stars with a mass less than eight solar masses, it will become a white dwarf, and for more massive stars, their fate is either that of neutron star or a black hole. Generally, the most stars start off the same way, with a large cloud of dust and gas, a nebula, slowly coalescing together due to gravity to form a protostar. Once enough mass has accumulated, gravity will compress the core enough that it's now hot enough to fuse hydrogen into helium, a process that releases energy as a small amount of mass, known as the mass defect, is converted into energy through the equation. E equals to mc squared. This energy generation results in a thermal pressure, which stops gravity from compressing the star further. And this balance is known as hydrostatic equilibrium. This is the thing keeping star stable. Once hydrostatic equilibrium has been achieved, the star is now a mean sequence star. Eventually, the hydrogen in the corn will run out, and the star will burn the hydrogen in the shells surrounding the corn, causing it to expand and its outer layers curl into a red giant. Simultaneously, the corn and later the outer layer can now fuse heavier and heavier elements, but eventually this process won't release enough energy to maintain hydrostatic equilibrium, and the star will collapse under its own gravity into a white dwarf. A star about the size of Earth, but with a mass similar to our Sun. White dwarfs remain stable due to something known as electron degeneracy pressure, a phenomenon arising from the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and the Pauli exclusion principle. The uncertainty principle basically states that you can't know absolutely certain a particle's position and its momentum, i.e. where it's going, at the same time ever. Quantitatively, this can be written through the equation delta x times delta rho is greater or equal to h bar over 2. The Pauli exclusion principle, on the other hand, states that two fermions, i.e. protons, neutrons, and electrons, can't occupy the same quantum state. If this definition sort of went over your head, then you're not alone. So, to simplify, with regards to electron degeneracy pressure in a white dwarf, the exclusion principle can basically be approximated down to saying that for n number of electrons in a volume of size v, each electron can't occupy space larger than v over n, as that would mean it's overflowing into and occupying the same space as another electron, which is obviously a big no-no as far as we're concerned. So, as gravity compresses the star more and more due to its thermal pressure losing the fight against gravity, V gets smaller and smaller, and thus, the maximum volume that an electron can inhabit decreases. Because the volume decreases, the uncertainty in the electron's position also decreases, and due to the uncertainty principle, this means that the uncertainty in the electron's momentum must increase to satisfy that inequality. This leads to an increase in the average speed of an electron, because momentum is mv, which means that the force slash pressure the electrons exert on their surroundings increases until eventually the pressure is strong enough to counteract the compression from gravity and keep the white dwarf stable. When the mass of the star is greater than the Chandrasekhar limit, which is around 1.44 solar mass, but less than the thomas upperheimer workov limit, which is around 3.2 solar mass, Electron degeneracy pressure is not enough to offset gravity even with electrons traveling near the speed of light. In this scenario, electrons and protons are compressed together into neutrons, thus forming a neutron star. Neutrons are fermions, so they also obey the Pauli exclusion principle. So neutron degeneracy pressure will also be generated to counteract gravity in the same way as with electrons. Neutron stars are much smaller and denser than white dwarfs, and around the size of a city with an average radius of about 20 km. White dwarfs can also become neutron stars by accretion-induced collapse, but this won't be covered. When the mass of a star is greater than the thomas oppenheimer workov limit, even neutron degeneracy pressure is not strong enough to offset gravity. 
After this point, physics becomes very murky, but generally it can be assumed that the star becomes a black hole.